We've embarked on a new year. 2021 is upon us now and looking forward to some great shaves for the new year. This isn't my first shave, obviously, of 2021, but this is my first shave video. I hope you enjoyed my last video. It was a wrap up of last year, 2020, and it showed my den, my shaved in, kind of a den tour, if you will. So for today's shave, trying a soap that I've had a little while, but I've never done a video on. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, speaking of that soap, I'm using Jello. Jello is a very popular soap amongst wet shavers worldwide. Uh, I believe it's made in Italy. Is that correct? Yeah. And uh, yeah, made in Italy. Beautiful soap. Smells like cherries, or I guess people say kind of an almond. I don't know if that's the almond tree or the almond blossom or almonds themselves. Not exactly sure. But I do get kind of a cherry scent from it. Pretty cheap. Bought it on Amazon. 10 bucks. It does have tallow. It's tallow based. I don't get the greatest, greatest results with it, but it's not bad. I get, I get pretty decent results. Um, and since I don't get maybe the greatest results, I'm going to be using some pre-shave. I've got my Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements Clown Fruit um, Shave Cube. Uh, now, this has a very light scent. It has that clown fruit scent, which I've mentioned in a previous video. It's kind of like root beer, kind of a sweet scent. Um, so it complements the... Um, the cello, which has a sweet cherry scent, both a sweet scent, and it complements that well. And I found that by using that as a pre-shave, it really makes the cello perform really, really well. As far as uh, razor and blades, going to be using uh, my Razor Rock Slant, a 37 slant, and then also a Rapira, am I saying that correct? Uh, blade, it's in the kind of uh, Voskhod, I'm probably not saying that correct either, the Voskhod family, it's made in Moscow. Uh, great blade, I really do like this blade. I actually have a hundred of them, a hundred pack, uh, but the Rapira um, blade is the one that I'm using. And of course, I've got a new brush. I've got this DS Cosmetics flat top brush that I'm using. I bought that on AliExpress, it was on sale, free shipping, 15 bucks basically was the total cost on that. Uh, but yeah, great little brush, I've used it a few times. Looking forward to it's synthetic. Looking forward to more shaves with that in the future. And then, of course, I'm uh, lathering all this up in my Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements uh, Scuttle, unbreakable plastic scuttle. Love this thing here in Wisconsin. We're in the dead of winter, even though it's been a very mild winter. Uh, this is a great way to get that warm lather each day. I love it. And then to wrap everything up, since this is kind of a cherry scent, I'm using Central Texas Soaps Shaving, uh, excuse me, Central Texas Soaps Mr. Pepper uh, Aftershave, which actually does smell kind of cherry-like. If you've ever had a Dr. Pepper, this smells like Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper kind of smells like cherry soda or like a plum. Either way, it's sweet and it's kind of got, it's all in the same family, if you will. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some in my shaving scuttle, some of that cella, and I'm going to whip it up. Uh, I'll cut away to that, and then we'll come back for the shave.
okay. I've already used a warm towel on my face, but I'll put a little bit more water on my face before I use the clown fruit cube. And I made sure to say my face and not the face. So my wife watched one of my videos, uh, shaping videos recently, and she made fun of the fact that I said, uh, oh, my neighbor's taking a shower. Hopefully that's not too loud. We're buying a house in the spring and I'm looking forward to not hearing the neighbors like taking showers and peeing and stuff. <laughs> So back to what I was saying. Uh, she made fun of the fact that I said wet the face instead of wet my face. And she's like, why did you say that? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. And then I actually went and looked at a bunch of other like YouTubers videos. Almost everybody says wet the face. Um, and then there's another gentleman, uh, is his name Douglas Yonker? I'd have to, I have to look it up. Uh, he's got a shaving video or channel, but he also, his is actually called like wet the face. Or he's got like a line of products called Wet the Face. We say that. It's weird. <laughs> so that's the uh, Clown Fruit Glow Cube. It glows. Uh, the actual cube itself. Now if you read the directions on Phoenix Shavings website, it says with any of those cubes, you're supposed to apply it and then wash it off. And then apply it again. Now, I didn't. And I didn't do that. I applied it once, and I'm using my scrub. I'm using my scruff. Um, but it kind of makes sense because you're cleaning your face. You've got oil and stuff that builds up on your face. You ever have you ever showered and then used your shampoo, and then washed out the first shampooing and then put more shampoo? It lathers way better the next time because you got oil and crap in your hair. And that first round washes that out. But I already washed my face this morning, so it's pretty clean. But if you want the best results from any pre-shave, wash your face once, and then apply the pre-shave. Just, just a tip. Um, okay. Get the cello going here. I'm gonna give it one little quick shot here in my scuttle. And I found that this pre-shave really helps soaps that are so-so for me. I'm not saying this is bad, but it's not as good as like some of the artisan soaps that I've got. Okay. There you go. It looks beautiful. And I'm going to do a little bit of a face lather as well to kind of integrate that pre-shave with my cello. So I hope everyone is doing well. 2020 is over. 2021 is still kind of, you know, <laughs> been active to say the least. Man, I watched an awesome documentary. I'm a big fan of documentaries. Uh, on HBO, if you've got like, it's called like HBO Max, I guess. I don't know. We added HBO to our Amazon Prime. So it's not the true HBO app, but it's, I watch HBO on demand. And I watched a documentary on D.B. Cooper. You ever heard about this dude? So back in 1971, this guy hijacked a plane headed from Portland, Oregon to Seattle, Washington. Then he demanded $200,000 and wanted to fly to Mexico. They gave him the 200 grand, but they said they had to go to Reno to refuel. Anyways, he jumped out of the plane. He used a parachute and jumped out of the plane. And HBO did a really good documentary on that hijacking. So it's the only FBI air crime that was never solved. Um, and they technically closed the case. They were like, if we get a big lead, we'll reopen it. But it was in the early 70s, I mean, so 
he's likely dead. But no one ever knows what happened to the guy. I won't go into too many details, but it essentially uh, focuses on like four suspects, four possible suspects. I first heard about D.B. Cooper through the singer guy that I like named Todd Snyder. He's my favorite singer of like all time. Folk singer, he's like a hippie folk singer guy. I got to meet him and hang out with him once on his bus, very cool. But uh, yeah, if you're a fan of documentaries and you have access, check that out. It's called, I believe it's just called D.B. Cooper. But Todd Snyder wrote a song about D.B. Cooper. Yeah, he either got away with a couple hundred thousand dollars or he died. And they don't really know. Uh, what else? So I did a video a while back, I mean, it's been a few months now, about my grandfather's. The soap I used was Chats with Grandpa by. Um, Hub City Soap Company out of Lubbock, Texas, where I'm from. So I wanted to do a quick video or just at least talk about my grandmothers. Because we all know they're the real the centerpiece, if you will. They're the ones that deserve all the credit. Uh, grandpas are great, but grandmas, man. Grandmas are where it's at. My dad's mother, her name was Dorothy. She passed away 27, 2016, 20, no, 2015, I think. Gosh, might have been 2014, very recently. Um, born in 1929. In Texas, she was just a funny lady. Like, she spoke her mind. Like, she did not care if it offended somebody. Most of her life, she was a, uh, like, she typed, she was like a secretary. Or, like, did, like, uh, stenography work at, like, court cases. Um. She could type insanely quick and she was really cool because she really jumped on board with technology you know a lot of people that are that old are like oh computers i don't know she was like right on it right when like pcs kind of became available she's like i want a computer i want a personal computer when the internet became readily available she wanted to be online and she, she illegally downloaded music through like kazaa and stuff and like she thought she was a criminal and she kind of enjoyed the fact that she was illegally downloading, like Napster and all that. My grandmother was, was into that. Uh, very funny lady. Uh, she smoked cigarettes, but then she quit. I was, I was sucking my thumb. I was like maybe three, four years old, still sucked my thumb. She was like, I'll quit smoking if you quit sucking your thumb. And we made a pact, and we did it together. show this picture and she caught a fish a black bass and you can see how big it is this thing's huge and there's the picture of her holding it like and I still have this fish I have it hanging in my house she was very proud of that fish and that's an awesome catch that's an awesome fish I don't know she's just a cool lady very uh she could be honorary, but when it really boiled down to it, she was super nice. Um, she loved to play Nintendo. <laughs> Dr. Mario and like the Mario series, it was her jam. And then uh, she had a twin sister. That twin sister passed away like one month to the day before her. And we all knew when her sister passed away that 
she was soon to follow because they had such a close connection. She used to joke that her resume um, said, it said something like, shorthand, shorthand was a, a way before they could type that they could do uh, like stenography in, um, in uh, courtrooms. And on her resume, it said, I don't know shorthand, and I smoke cigarettes. That's, like, that's what she claims, said on her resume. She was up front, and she was like, just so you know, I don't know shorthand, and I smoke cigarettes. So you can either hire me or not. But she was very sought after, from what I've been told, by local attorneys, because she was. She was a good secretary. She was a hard worker. I always admired that about her. My mom's mother, her name was Bernice. She passed away more recently. In fact, she passed away just over a year ago, back in 2019. And she was a very different lady. She was highly educated. She was college educated, had her master's degree, even though she was born in the 1930s, which was not extremely uncommon for women, but it was rare. Um, but yeah, Bernice was a guidance counselor, a high school guidance counselor. She was a teacher for much of her life. Um, and then my mother and her kind of had a rough relationship over the years. My mom's mother demanded perfection. And who's perfect? Nobody. So they kind of butted heads sometimes. She was still nice though. She was, like I said, the fact that she was well educated, she really, it was important for her that I read books and that, that I, I too got my education. Believe me, way more good than bad. But there were rocky times. Even in my relationship with her, we, did, we didn't see eye to eye all the time. One thing I do know, um, my mom's mother, Bernice, was, was well off, fairly wealthy, and my dad's mother, Dorothy, was not. I feel like Dorothy was happier. Money doesn't buy happiness. I read a Buddhist proverb once on happiness. And it said, if you're not happy now, you'll never be happy. You have to find a way to be happy even in like not the greatest of situations. have hope, you know, survivors of the Holocaust, even in the concentration camps, even when the situation was just awful, they still had to find at least some joy in life. And it might be the little things, it might be the simple things, whatever joy you can find, even in something that awful. And money can't buy those things. So that's my two cents. What else about Bernice? She was very social. She was a socialite. She, she threw very extravagant parties. A funny story with her. She uh, decorated the outside of her house with Christmas lights, Lumin, luminarias, luminarias and Christmas lights. And she even had me dress up, I was a kid, had me dress up like an elf and go out there and pretend to be animatronic. Like, and she told me like no expression, like she wanted people to think that she bought like a life-size elf robot.
So she had me pretend to be a robot. And I remember people driving by and like, because that's what people did in West Texas. They drove by and looked at Christmas lights. I remember windows rolling down and people were like, is that a real kid? Bernice was extravagant. <laughs> Later in life, she ended up um, having Alzheimer's. So the last couple of years of her life maybe weren't the best quality. But she was in good care. funny story with Dorothy. Oh, <laughs> so my dad's mom, Dorothy, she, she had a couple of pecan trees. She had, so, backstory. My dad's dad, uh, he planted three pecan trees. One for me, one for my two cousins. Only one survived. And it's kind of sad because he planted them from a pecan and then they grew into these trees. Again, one only, only one survived. But, they, he never saw them produce pecans. The year he died, or the year after he died, was the first year that that one produced pecans. It's still alive. It still produces pecans. It's, it's crazy. It's a huge tree now. It's also almost 40 years old. Um, but after my grandfather had passed, obviously there's pecans now, and squirrels would like try to get the pecans. So my grandmother had a little BB gun, like the Red Rider style from the movie A Christmas Story. Cheap little, weak bb gun and she would see those squirrels and she'd go there he is and she'd grab that gun and she'd run out there and from the hip she would shoot at these squ uh, squirrels and not she there's no way she could hit them or whatever and it would scare them off it was just so funny to see my grandmother run into the house and grab her little bb gun and run out on the porch and shoot the squirrels she was a funny lady uh so yeah both that's that's all you got to be in life is just funny and extravagant Oh, before I before I clean off my face, I wanted to I to get this area. I can probably just use a little bit of soap that I've got. Like every third shave, I have to shave those those little spots. Obviously, I have to be careful not to cut my lip. Okay. So I didn't talk much about the razor or the blade. Great razor, great blade. found that with that razor, when I find a good blade, I don't even feel the blade in the razor. don't play today because they got a buy, a first round buy in the playoffs. I plan on watching some football. It's wild card weekend. It's Sunday, the 10th, so I already watched, already watched the games on Saturday. Excited to watch some football today. Yeah, that Dr. Pepper's cherry-ish scent compliments my already sweet shave. Good stuff. All right, folks, thanks for joining me for my first shave video of 2021. We'll talk to you soon.